Hello. Let's uh, get everything up and running here. Um, hopefully everyone can hear me. Um, I see good bounce on here. Feel free to let me know in the chat. But my name's Andy. Uh, I am the first senior mentor here in uh, Central Florida. Um, and I'm also a big uh, Lego fan and Lego user. Um, so, you know, I wanted to uh, do this sort of unboxing of Spike Prime um, and hopefully help coaches uh, make a decision um, about this next season. I've had a bunch of calls over the last couple of weeks from coaches asking me, from first Lego League coaches asking me, um, you know, hey, should I be considering Spike Prime? You know, what is this new system? You know, should I run the EV3 and all that? Um, so I'm seeing a comment here for no sound. Is this true? Uh, I see Finney saying no sound. I hear you. So uh, my, my girlfriend here is saying that she does hear me in the stream, so that might be on your end. Um, but uh, if we don't hear any sound, uh, someone else leave a comment. Okay. I see someone who has sound, cool. Um, so if it's too soft, let me know I, um, or not. But anyway, so we're talking about this. Uh, so this is Spike Prime. It's a new sort of smart brick. Um, it's a little different than say the EV3 um, in that it has six sort of input output combos. It has an LED display um, instead of an LCD um, and some different sensors and all that. So this is a robot I had in a video. Um, that I did for the first Lego League Virtual Open, the Share and Learn Virtual Open. Um, so, uh, you know, if, if you want to see that, you can go look around on Facebook um, and find out more. Um, so, anyway, let's get to this unboxing. So, I have a brand new. The only thing I've done is remove the tape because it was a bit of pain to get the tape off. But this is what Spike Prime is going to look like when you get it. Um, now, to help us through this, I have a few different camera shots. So. Uh, what uh, the box looks like. It's the same box that you would get with an EV3 education set um, or the, uh, the same sort of box that, uh, you know, you would get um, with the NXT kit and all that. I absolutely love them. They're super durable. Um, I see a lot of teams at competitions actually carrying the robots around in these, and I think they'll work great with Spike Prime. So opening up the kit, setting that aside, uh, it gives you this lovely sort of launch, uh, you know, Instruct everything on Spike Prime, it seems to be in the app and digital. Um, and I have my iPad here as well, so we can sort of power that up and get going. Um, but it has a lithium ion battery that comes in the kit uh, that can charge over, um, you know, a USB cable and all that. It tells you to turn it on and then it says go to the Lego Education website. On the back, we got the complete bomb for the kit, so our bill of materials, um, as well as the handy measuring guide and all that. Um, so it shows that we have a couple of different motors and sensors. And this, unlike the uh, NXT and EV3 kits, really contains a mix of both system as well as Technic Lego. Um, the system pieces in here are really nice because they allow you to interface it with Technic. Um, and we'll dig into that here in a second. So you get this lovely cover. Um, you also get some stickers. And the stickers are actually very, very helpful. It gives you this lovely indicator um, because they go on these bins. So on each bin, um, there's two sets and they are identical sets, so if you don't want the bins, they do stack and you can sort of take them out of the way. Um, I'm a big fan of these bins. There is also the, uh, before I throw it away, the sort of standard, uh, I'm assuming this is warranty and compliance information stuff that you can read and some basic instructions on it. So uh, if you want to read that, feel free. I'm going to set that aside. Um, but yeah, so you can use the, uh, the various different stickers here to put them uh, to label what goes in each compartment. Um, and I've actually done that on my other set. Um, so that's super duper helpful for trying to know where things to go. I remember with the EV3 set, um, the education set, people were like, hey, where does this go? And they sort of get disorganized. And as a coach, you know, how do you have all the pieces in the kit? Is it easy to check? Um, I think these stickers will be a big help. They also gave some stickers for the outside so that you can label things. Um, so Lego really went out of their way on this kit to, uh, to make it handy for you um, and that sort of thing. Okay, I'm going to switch the camera over just to the overhead now because this is going to be the fun part where we go through the different bags. So take these boxes out of the way. We got another give Lego some feedback and then we get to the Lego pieces. Uh, they do include a USB cable. Um, this is quite a nice USB cable. Um, so I, I've actually used mine for a few other things that aren't Lego. Uh, some more warranty information. This one looks like wireless you know, compliance and all that. So. 
set that aside. Um, so then we go back to these bags, um, and the bags are all numbered like what you would expect out of a regular Lego set. So, and I'll go through them one by one here. So we'll start with bag number one. And what I think is really cool, if I go back to these pictures, or the stickers again, the bag numbers correspond uh, to the picture. So bag number one has a couple of minifigs in it and some clear pieces. Um, that corresponds uh, to this quite well. So I will set that aside and I will set that over there. We'll start taking this apart and doing this together. So bag one, uh, we got a couple of minifigs. I'm going to take them out first because I love playing with minifigs. We have a girl minifig and a guy minifig it looks like and a couple of different hair choices for them so uh, and there should be another set of legs yep so uh, you can assemble them however you want but on the uh, pictures it does say that the you know the, the female or the girl looking minifig gets orange and has the hoodie um, but you can do whatever these are also uh, cool because you can mix and match the hair and all that so get my minifigs going, they go in this first bin. Uh, I'll put the stickers on as we go as well um, so we can sort of see this live during the unboxing. So, And I do love the hairdo on there. Uh, so here we go, I'll take that sticker out and putting that in there. And I'm putting it just on the side so that it's easy to sort of see what goes in there. Um, I'll set this to the side while we go. We have a couple of clear dome pieces, um, which I'm a big fan that they've included these. Uh, these are really great to put on the front of touch sensors. Um, so when you bump into things, um, you know, it has a little bit bigger area than just the little pointy spot. So, uh, and they're clear, which is also kind of cool. So you don't necessarily see them. A um, whole bunch of uh, different white little uh, round, uh, two by four round bricks. Um, then we have some Technic uh, system, you know, basically has the holes in it here for these uh, system uh, plates. And then we have uh, probably my favorite piece in the entire set, second only to the minifigs, is they have these swirls, um, which when I built, uh, I called them Triggy, uh, I, used the, I used the swirls in the big round one there for the ears, um, and I really, really like that a lot. So um, that's really awesome. We have a couple of uh, plates here that you know have a single stud on top um, that are also round two by fours we have those in white then we have the ones without the stud on top here in black so that's pretty cool we have some cheese wedges these are sort of double cheese wedges um, if you're not familiar with what a Lego cheese wedge is it's these sort of uh, let's see if I can get closer there they sort of look like a little cheese wedge and there's uh, two studs wide and then we have some uh, aqua, sort of turquoisey, uh, what you call it, um, round plates as well, two by two plates. And then finally, they give us a set of eyes. So it's a whole bunch of different eyes, googly eyes and whatnot, um, that you can use to decorate your robot. Looks like they give you three eyes. So that's pretty cool. Um, and also mirroring this is on the uh, bomb here. Um, you can sort of follow along. Evidently, I got a few extra pieces in there. I got an extra eye. Lego's famous for giving um, extra pieces just to make sure you have a good play experience. So totally on board with that. So I'm really digging this first bag uh, from coaching first Lego League teams. One of the, uh, the biggest things that um, really drives me nuts with uh, teams is them not decorating the robot. I love seeing that personality. Um, and I love, you know, getting to see the kids be engaged and sort of have that access to the robot. Um, so having the minifigs, having the eyes, having the swirls in there, uh, that makes the robot more fun, gives it some personality. Um, and as I've sat there and judged a lot of robots, uh, makes it a lot better in my opinion. So uh, we'll move on to bag two. So bag two, bag two goes right here. So I will get the, bag two is our bricks. So I'll put this in there. I've never been good at stickers and that continues to this day. Um, I'm too impatient I suppose. Um, but So we have some slopes in here. Some 
These look to be a two by six with a, sort of a slope there on two by four of it, uh, sloping bricks. So that's kind of cool. Um, I could see these becoming sort of either hair pieces on robots or teeth or all sorts of stuff. So again, more ways for the kids to sort of express themselves. Um, we have a couple of yellow uh, sloping pieces as well, um, which I think could go really well with the black ones. And you could probably, you know, do some cool sort of like shapes and stuff like that or, you know, do all sorts of fun stuff. So I'm, I'm really digging those pieces. And then there is a boatload of colorful bricks. Um, so we got two green, two yellow, two red, two purple, and two blue. All of these work with the color sensor, um, so that's really nice. And the hardest uh, thing about Technic is interfacing it with sort of these regular system bricks. So these all have Technic axles going right down the middle there. Um, so those Technic axle holes will allow you to slip them on easily uh, to the robot um, and make it super accessible and all that. And the colors are fun. So these could just end up being stacked, you know, sort of like that and just be like scan it sort of things if you're a teacher and you want to use that in the classroom like that. Um, or it could be something a little bit more substantial and part of the robot structure, bringing in some cool colors. So we're going to move on to bag three. I'm going to find bag three. Bag three looks to be probably the least interesting bag from my perspective um, to date because these are just the Technic pins. Oops. And there I go, messing up that sticker already. There we go. So these are just our standard Technic pins. Um, you can sort of never have enough of these, uh, the black pins here. Um, I go through them like they're water. Um, they're super duper important to every robot. They're sort of the main structural piece. Um, whenever I build my sort of building strategy, it's fill every hole with these Technic pins. Um, and that makes usually a very, very strong connection. And therefore I use a lot of them. Uh, the rest of these pins in here, um, we have some uh, frictionless uh, axle pin hybrids. Um, so this is really great if you want to make another set of wheels like a, uh, a caster wheel or something like that. Um, you also have the frictionless uh, sort of pin with the uh, axle connector on top or the bushing on top. You have a regular full bushing, several of those. You have your friction based, uh, you know, triple pin. Um, I love these. This is a friction pin to a axle connection. Um, so this uh, allows you to sort of uh, either you can connect it into some of these pieces and, you know, use it that way. Um, or you could plug it into uh, one of these bricks and use it that way. So it's a very flexible piece. Big fan of that. And they give you a few of those. Um, and that's pretty much it. They do give you also the, uh, the ball joints. Um, so if you're using a rubber band or something, that's a really, really popular thing in First Lego League, I know. Um, is to use rubber bands. So uh, this is a great rubber band attachment point. So that is bag number three. Cool. Moving on now to bag number four. Bag number four looks to be pretty interesting, if you ask me, because um, it's got all sorts of pieces. Um, let's find it here. Here we go, bag number four. Uh, the piece that I am most excited about in this particular bag um, are these little guys. Uh, they come in all sorts of colors, which is really cool. Um, but this is a special uh, Technic piece designed specifically for Spike Prime to actually hold the, uh, the wires in place. And you can see I actually used them um, on this guy. I used one right there and another one down there. And they're really great just for that cable management. Um, that's usually a big problem on uh, competitive robots. So seeing those is really nice. Um, besides that, in here you have sort of uh, your standard axles um, and various different connectors, but you also have uh, some of the Lego teeth, the Technic teeth, so these are fun. Um, you can use them on wheels to sort of measure rotation, or if, again, you want to add some personality to your robot. Um, that's what those are good for. You also have uh, these sort of, I, they're basically covers for you know, an axle, um, or you can put two pins into them. I'm going to use them as a coupler. Um, but these are sort of fun. Again, you can add some colors to things um, or if you need to make uh, you know, a pin a little longer, something like that. Uh, also, going really nicely with those ball pins that were in here is they have um, these sort of transfer bars that you can use to transfer power side to side um, you know, or up and down in your robot. Um, you know, that's one of the mechanisms that I don't see often a lot is teams using motors to sort of 
linearly actuate different things. So uh, I think it's mainly because they don't have the pieces or they don't quite realize how to do it. So having this in there and having the ball joints uh, is a great sort of option for teams um, and gives them a new sort of creative way to make the robot move. Um, so those are in there as well. Uh, there's also some of these um, two mod uh, beams that have the axle pin on one side and then have a uh, just a regular uh, hole on the other side. So pretty pumped about that bag. Um, a lot of cool stuff. Like I said, the, uh, the uh, cable management uh, pins are fantastic. Um, and in there, uh, if you look at the uh, picture here, you'll see that there are actually six. Uh, actually, eight, I lied. Uh, nope, ten. So there's two in each color. So the same five colors that you have um, in that previous one, you actually have them as well in there. So, and again, the bomb is all nice and accurate, and it actually overlays quite nicely with the bins that go in here. So um, pretty, pretty nice uh, way to do that. So, so that's this first bin. Um, I also like the size of the bin. Um, a lot of times when you're coaching teams, it's hard to sort of partition parts and get them uh, you know, shared with teams or with uh, kids on your team. So this is a nice sort of way to put some parts if you don't want to keep them organized and put some parts in here and just be like, here, Billy, or here, Susie, um, can you build this attachment? And they have a lot of pieces right at their hands. So cool. Set that aside. OK, so we're going to move on to bag five. So bag five um, goes in this large uh, hole right here. And bag five contains a lot of our lift arms. So I will put that in there. Cool. Now, here's bag five. So just going to dump this one out here on the table. They're big enough pieces. So building strong robots uh, usually comes down to lift arms. The number of times I have seen a poker on a first Lego League robot, or even just you know a couple of these things to lift something up or whatever, um, they're sort of fundamental to how a lot of those teams uh, design the robots. So they give you a few of them in uh, here as well. Probably not as many as I would like in a kit, um, but you probably have some at home already, or the expansion set's another way to get more. And we'll be talking about the expansion set here in a second. But they give you four. Um, I think that's a good number to get started. Um, they give you some dog bones. Um, I honestly like to try to use them. They're a very interesting piece um, in how you use them, uh, in the situations that you might want to use them. Um, they aren't always obvious. So for me, this is one of my favorite challenges as an AFL, I'm an adult fan of LEGO, um, is figuring out how to use these in builds. Um, I have a couple handfuls of them and I absolutely love them as pieces um, because they are forcing me to be more creative. Um, Probably something overlooked uh, that I don't see a lot in First Lego League Robot are these T pieces. Um, so this is a great way to attach something uh, to your robot um, and make a very, very strong 90 degree connection. They give you four of them. Um, so that's a great number. Uh, you know, and as a coach, I would challenge my students to figure out how they might want to use those. Um, I think that that is uh, probably a, you know, a good challenge for them um, to sort of be involved with that. So. Uh, you have a number of 90 degree 4 mod by 2 mod um, you know, lift arms here. These are sort of classic. Again, I think we could probably use more of them. Um, they're quite popular, I know, with the kids, but uh, we got a few of those. We also have four, um, and I love this color. Um, again, of sort of this like aqua, um, you know, uh, 3 by 5 lift arms. Um, so these are those 90 degrees. These are super duper uh, critical, I think, um, to most robots. You can put a lot of force on them. They, they really make things strong. They're, they're pretty durable. Um, so I would encourage your kids to, you know, if you're coaching a team, to definitely be something to encourage them to actually try using. Um, but I'm glad that they included them in the kit. Again, I'd probably want a few more, but that's what the expansion set's for. A um, couple of these uh, bent ar uh, lift arms here. That's probably good, um, you know, amount, in my opinion. I used uh, both of them actually on this robot. You can see them here. Uh, it goes right there and down. So. Uh, you know, they're pretty good structural pieces. Um, they make good bumpers on the front of, you know, first Lego League robots, that sort of thing. Um, or an antenna on top, again, if your kids are having some fun with it. So those are pretty cool to check out. Um, finally, we just have some of these bent lift arms left. And uh, again, these make good for bumpers and that sort of thing. So they give you plenty. So I think that's a good selection of lift arms. Um, we're going to move into bag six here. Bag six has some pins and some of the very exclusive uh, spike prime pieces. So, let's find it. so here's bag six. 
So again, new and exclusive to Spike, well not exclusive, but definitely new with Spike Prime, um, are these sort of direction changers. Um, they give you a lot of holes and a lot of different ways to sort of transfer uh, support. Um, so this would be really cool around your motors, around your wheels, um, around anything that sort of spins. Uh, it can almost become a pillow block for uh, you know, axles and stuff to sort of you know, interface with your chassis. Um, you got the holes on the side as well. Um, so this is, I think, a really powerful, cool new piece and uh, excited to see this here in the kit. Um, so we have a few of those um, in multiple colors, which is also really nifty. So we got them in black, we got them in purple, and we got them in, uh, well, it appears just black and purple. So, but you got a whole bunch of them though. That's, you know. Uh, the other cool thing is you get the brand new caster wheel. Um, if you're a LEGO education uh, user, you probably know of the cast wheel that came in the EV3 set, had a metal ball. This one has a plastic ball, um, so you don't need to worry about it wearing or rusting or anything like that. Um, it's super fluid in there. It's smaller um, you know, uh, in size and all that, so it's a great little uh, ball. It stays captive once it's in there. There's no obvious way to get it out, um, which is also handy if you're worried about uh, little kids uh, with this. Um, I'd still be cautious around this with them, but... Um, from an accessibility standpoint, though, I think this is a lot better than the metal ball. It also doesn't weigh nearly as much, um, again, because it doesn't have the metal ball. Then we have a collection of various different pins. We have some Smith pins, um, so these sort of uh, connectors, very, very popular. We have the Hassan pin um, you know, for those 90 degrees, and we just have some you know, simple sort of one-on-one -on -one pins here, um, and those are pretty great as well. So. I think it's a pretty good collection of pins. I don't think you could prob probably ask for more. I mean, you, you can, but um, I think that's a pretty practical amount. So coming up next, we talk about gears. So I'm gonna put this guy. Oops, I'm gonna mess this one up. Came close, but no, I did good. Okay, so bag seven is all about gears um, and pulleys. Probably the least utilized thing in competitive Lego robots that I've seen. Um, so there's a few different gear sizes in here. Um, they're all bevel gears, sort of the more modern Technic, um, which is fine. I prefer the non-bevel gears, but um, these are fine. Uh, they allow you to, you know, the advantage over a bevel gear versus a non-bevel is that you can sort of do them at 90 degree angles like that. So being able to transfer power sideways um, is usually very, very helpful instead of the dog, uh, or uh, the dog gears and all that. Um, and you have a, a whole bunch of different sizes of gears, which is cool. Um, you also get some uh, pulleys in here. So these are not rubber bands, these are actually pulleys. Um, and to go with the pulleys, you have a few different ways you can use them. You can use them on these two different hubs that they give you, um, the small the big, so you can sort of get a little bit of advantage. Um, they do slip though, um, that's the only thing to remember. They also give you the rubber for these hubs. So if you want to use them as wheels, um, either small wheels uh, or large wheels on your robot, um, you have that as an option as well. Um, I would encourage you if you're a coach, this is a great thing to have your kids explore in terms of which wheels uh, have the best traction and um, what they might want to use. So um, definitely check these out. Uh, I would also encourage them to use the pulley. Uh, I know every year there's probably five or six different challenges on the board that would be simpler using the pulley instead of a fixed motor action just because they hit something. So. Uh, and then last but not least, you have sort of these shock absorbers. Um, and these are, you know, I, I've seen them mainly use the shock absorbers because uh, they're squishy, um, but they can also join two axles together and give you some freedom and let you twist them and stuff like that. So uh, they're basically little silicone rubber things. So I like them, they're pretty cool. Last but not least, it wouldn't be a Technic set without some Technic beams. So let me put that in there. So bag eight is our Technic beams. Um, so here we go. We got an assortment of beams in lots of fun colors, uh, which is great. Um, we have these little one by three, well, they're three mod beams. Um, they are super handy for connecting things, building little mechanisms and all that. So uh, you get a handful of those. Um, you also get some of these five mod, which is probably my most used beam of all, um, is the five mod, and they give you four of those. And then you got some seven mod beams over here. Um, you get six of those, so uh, that's great. And then you go up to your nine mod beams. You got a few of those. And finally you cap it out, 
um, if I want to say these are 11. Yep, 11 mod beams, and these are the longest that come in the kit, um, at least that I've gotten to so far. There, there might be longer, um, but that's all I've gotten to. So I have now gone through every bag that's numbered inside the kit, and as you can see, there's still a lot of stuff to go through. So let's go through some of the things. Uh, we have a few other bags. There is a bag 13. Um, there's no label for where bag 13 goes. Um, so bag 13 is sort of up to you to play with and sort. Um, it does come with just some more pieces in general, uh, sort of like spare pieces, I guess, um, more bricks and stuff. So, uh, but yeah, there is a bag 13, but there's no spot for bag 13. So I'm going to keep it as a spare. Uh, you might choose to do this as a coach. I'm going to keep this one as a spare. Just, uh, you know, um, might make your life a little easier come the end of the season when you're trying to find those pieces or if you're teaching as part of a class and uh, that sort of thing. So I'm gonna set that aside. So what else comes in this kit? Let's get to the fun stuff. So first, we'll go to this big bag. When Spike Prime was announced, it made a lot of news in the LEGO community for these really, really large frames. So frames have become a pretty integral part of most modern uh, LEGO robots. And these frames, coupled with the really, really large um, aqua frames, are a great addition to uh, robots. I actually use them both uh, on the back of this guy. Um, they're a great addition. Uh, Gives you a lot of strength. It is not nearly as strong. Um, I could. I feel like this is strong enough. I could break it with my hands if I really wanted to. So it's definitely not going to be like a piece that you can slam on and just rely on. But if you build it with either a couple of these in line, um, I think you'll be okay. But there's definitely some flex. So if your kids are starting to build and rely on this, uh, you might want to um, give that a you know some reinforcement. Also in this bag we have. Um, I don't know a good name for them. They sort of look like hoses, but they're actually solid plastic. Again, this is great for adding personality to a robot. Um, these fit into the pins. So if I go and I take, here's a Smith pin here. This actually fit into that center hole, if I'm not mistaken. Maybe not a Smith pin. Um, maybe a regular pin? Yeah, I can fit them in there. I can also fit them in, I think, axle holes as well. Yeah, they fit really well into axle holes. Um, not so well in the pinholes, but in the axle holes, they'll definitely fit easily. And you can use that, um, you know, if you're trying to think of challenges in the off season or something, you know, this right here is a very easy thing to set out on the table and tell them to go pick it up. And they have to design some sort of mechanism to do that. So uh, great reusable pieces there. Um, probably my favorite piece, hands down, um, of the kit uh, are these wheels. These wheels are pretty much custom designed for competition. They're hard plastic hubs with a molded rubber on there. They don't slip very well, or I mean, they don't slip on the table. They actually roll very, very well. They have a good weight to them. They're a good size. Um, all around you get four of them, um, which is probably more than you need. You probably only need two, but uh, they do give you four. Um, and these are a home run. Absolutely love those. Um, also in this bag, we have some longer pieces. So, we have some, uh, a rack and pinion for our steering. And actually this guy is listed as having a home on here. Yeah, the rack and pinion goes into spot seven. Um, I think you get two of them, yep. So you can either use this for support um, on your robot, it, you know, if your kids can't quite capture a rack and pinion, but, or if you wanna make like a driving car or um, a linear, you know, uh, actuated arm to extend out. Um, some really, really good uh, things to sort of challenge your kids to think about building with. Uh, and these are the big long ones, so that's really cool to include. Um, we also have some longer, I want to say these are 13 mod, I could be wrong, uh, beams. So that's really cool as well. I'm gonna put those in with the beams where they're labeled to go. Um, we have two. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. So these are 2 by 16 plates. Um, so the 2 by 16 plates, I don't know if they have a home assigned on any of the pictures. I don't see it if there are ones. Feel free to yell at me uh, if you know the kit and all that. But um, pretty sure these guys don't have a home because I think they're just too long. Um, but yeah, a couple of those. Again, there's more system in this kit, which is great. And then last but not least, we have the black one, uh, 15 mod beams. Those obviously go in there. Um, 
And those are, again, fantastic. Usually the structural components of a robot, all that. Um, probably my favorite piece, the new piece, um, are these boards. So these are Technic base plates, essentially. And you can stick them together, make really strong. They can become the sides of your robot, bumpers on your robot. They, they are super duper strong. They're not as flimsy as the, uh, uh, the, fl uh, the frames, because there's obviously a lot more plastic here. They actually have some good heft to them. Um, there is quite a bit of weight for a Lego piece. Um, so you're probably going to want to, you know, build with them a fair bit. Uh, they're also great if you want to have your, you know, kids build a, you know, a stationary challenge and have them, uh, you know, be engaged in that sort of way. So, uh, you know, you can build it up and stack them. You can do all sorts of stuff. So these are, you get two of them in the kit, which is fantastic. Um, probably the highlight of the kit for me. Okay. Last bag of parts, and then we get into all the sensors, and we'll talk about those in a lot of detail. Um, so this last little bit here, we get uh, some Technic frames in black, which is nice because there's a lot of gray frames out there, and folks have used a lot of gray frames, so change of color is always appreciated. Um, we get a couple of just uh, three by, I want to say it's uh, nine? Three by 11, my bad, um, panels. So uh, these are super duper handy. Uh, you know, just for adding flair, being bumpers on your robot, all sorts of things. They also have the rounded um, sort of fenders, uh, Technic fenders, so you could, you know, put these to protect your wheels. Um, I actually use these guys on here just to give them sort of a more sort of streamlined look and all that, so uh, super fun. If I knock off his one ear, put that back on. Um, then you get sort of the, uh, a couple of slope pieces here, which you can get really creative on how you use them and actually have a pretty nifty... Uh, you know, sort of hat or something. Um, there are three technicals on the back of this one. Um, so again, you can use these for, you know, uh, putting them on the side, getting some different, uh, you know, looks and attention. I, I think this is a great sort of different piece to have in a Mindstorms kit or a, a Lego Education Robotics kit. So um, really enjoying that. Evidently, I missed another one of the compliance things. Okay, so now let's get into everything else in here. So. This white box contains two things that we care about. And they're already installed. This is the white box side. You do get a little cover, protective cover, um, but you get the battery, and this one had the battery already installed, which is really cool. Uh, there's a little sticker on here that says five volts DC. Um, so that looks pretty nifty, uh, and it powers right up. Um, so this is a programmable brick for Spike. Um, you have different programs in here. I don't have any on here because this is literally unboxing. Um, you know, like I said, you have the battery that you can pull out. It does turn off when you do that. It is a custom uh, rechargeable battery, which, depending on how long you keep your kit, may or may not be a good thing for you. Um, I'm hoping that LEGO comes out with a AA battery pack or something for this, uh, just because over time the uh, lithium-ion batteries will sort of degrade um, and all that. So you, you might want another option. It is a very small brick. Uh, that is the thing that I love the most about it, is how little it is. Um, the battery sits in there very positive. You have your two sort of grip points there. Um, you know, you don't want to be ramming this in too hard. There are these tiny little connectors all the way up here. Um, I'll see if I can get that closer there. Um, that the battery sits into, and it's got its own matching little set of connectors there. So, you know, be careful when you put them in. Don't want to ram it in too hard, but it's very positive. Um, what's notable on this is that you have three... Uh, uh, sort of ports on each side. There's no concept anymore of an input or an output. Everything can be put into any other port. Um, so this sort of follows in some of the other, uh, you know, boost and that sort of thing. It's the same sort of connector as well. Um, so that's really fantastic. Uh, you know, lots of different connection holes on here. If you had an EV3 brick, you'd, you'd be in very envious of this. So um, great, you know, little connection there. Okay, let's get started now on sensors. So first up, we have the new uh, color sensor. So this guy has an integrated cable, um, but they've actually done molding on it so that the cable can fit and actually wrap around in case you want to attach something on the back. So that is actually flat. You can see it, it's pretty much low profile there, um, and it's a perfect little square. Um, I love that about it. Um, I integrated it right on the front of this guy, and I did the same sort of thing running the cable out the back. Um, the cables are you know, sort of ribbon cables, but they're a little stronger than that. Um, they, like I said, they have the little uh, clips in there, so you can you know, do some pretty tight turns and all that. I wouldn't kink them, I'd avoid that. 
Um, but by and large, uh, these cables are pretty fantastic in terms of, um, you know, they're nowhere near as stiff as the EV3 cables. You can actually move these guys around. So, uh, but yeah, um, it's both a blessing and a curse to, uh, you know, have it embedded in here. It being connected means it can be a smaller, um, you know, sensor. So this is like an entire mod or two smaller than, you know, a Mindstorm sensor. So uh, that's kind of handy as well, especially as you're looking to build more compact robots. Um, yeah, I'm pretty cool with that. Uh, going into the touch sensor here. So this is our touch sensor with Spike Prime. Um, standard sort of touch sensor. It is a lot more springy um, than previous touch sensors. So it's a very positive when you press it. Uh, so your kids will notice that instantly when they go to start playing with it, which is very satisfying. Um, it feels like it can be more analog than sort of like the, uh, the Mindstorm sensor. So, Last sensor of the bunch here is the uh, ultrasonic sensor. So this is sort of a mainstay in uh, you know, the education kits. Honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of these in the first LEGO League, um, just because it, there's not really many surfaces that it bounces off of well. Um, but this does add great personality to your robot. Um, there's actually these light up areas around here. I'll see if I can get this guy to turn on and run one of his programs. Let's see. It also turns on very, very quickly, as you can see. But if I go and I run, there you go. You can see how just the top half of the eyes were lit up. Um, so you have, you know, the ability to do, uh, let's see if he will, yeah, he's just doing that, I guess. Um, but yeah, the top half of the eyes light up um, and the bottom half does. So you can get expressions um, out of it. They also look more like eyes. Um, so that's really cool. Uh, big fan of that. And you can control in software um, which ones you want to light up or not. So Next up, we have one large motor uh, that comes in the base kit. Um, I am in love with this motor. Uh, if you've been, if you've, have a team and you've been coaching uh, First Lego League or you're just an avid builder, um, you know that the Mindstorms motors are very, very difficult to build with. They're very, very weird shapes and all that. Um, this thing here is very much, uh, you know, a regular shape with lots of mounting holes all over. Um, you can just see how many mounting holes. It does have the axle going all the way through. Plus, one of the things I love is screen printed on the top. So on the top side and that side is a zero point. And actually, one of your commands in the software is you can actually zero it and home it. Um, so that's really handy, uh, you know, to do. Um, and also show your kids, like, oh, hey, look at how fast this motor is moving and all that. There is a bit of play in it. Um, it's about the same amount of play that you'd find in, you know, an EV3 motor. So you're not going to be doing anything super duper precise. Um, but, I mean, in terms of a motor, this is pretty much ideal, I think, for a LEGO robot. It's the perfect size. It's the perfect shape. Um, I think that's a home run. Continuing in that theme are two of these guys. So these are uh, the, the small motors or medium motors, whatever they're calling them. Um, I don't know if it has an actual name. Nope, it doesn't have an actual name on the photo. Uh, these are also like pretty much half the size, you know, of the big guys. And I'm okay with that. Uh, this is what I used in my robot um, over here. Um, and this guy is, I use two of those motors. They're super powerful enough just on their own. Um, you know, they're a good little motor. Uh, again, has the screen printing on there. So you have the zero point and it's also printed on the top here, right there. Um, so, you know, integrated cable again. Uh, there is some cable limit on the smaller motor though. It only goes up. So you can't go down with it. So that's just something to be considerate. You know, the larger motor and the ultrasonic sensor have the ability to sort of go either way. Um, you know, though these motors don't. My only concern with these motors, um, sort of going forward, is how long before you snap off one of those cables. Um, I'd be curious uh, to see how long they last. There is no strain relief on here. You can actually see that there's no strain relief at all. So who knows, um, you know, but We'll see in a few years. Uh, they do seem to be pretty durable and pretty strong now, and I know LEGO stands behind their products. So I, I don't think that this would be poorly engineered, but just something to, to be considerate about. So. so I'm going to pack all this up and get to the expansion set now. That's probably going to be uh, the next thing. So putting this all in, I'm going to put the big LEGO pieces in here, put the wheels in there, some of the pieces that don't really have a home. Um, they sort of go in the bottom of this kit, which is 
cool. And also my electronics, my programmable brick. There we go. Cool, so that's what sort of the loose pieces are gonna be in the kit. And you'll hear it as you move it around. And then I'll put on the top two very nicely. And then I'm gonna put this in heads up just so I'm aware uh, is the bomb. Oh, one thing I do wanna put in here before I forget and I don't lose it is bag 13. Um, essentially spare parts is how I'm going to treat it, but we'll put that in there, put that on top. I do have the ability that if I want to label things, I can do that. They gave me a whole bunch of stickers for this. I'm not sure I'm going to use those right now. Um, you know, there are spots uh, that you can put them on the motors and all that, so I guess I'll take that out. I didn't really uh, look too closely for those, but maybe there are. Now, I wouldn't say that there's any specific spot per se that's sort of called out, at least on the motor here where you'd want to stick it, but you could stick it anywhere. It's got plenty of space. And likewise on the uh, brick, it probably fits underneath the speaker or probably fits underneath the other sticker there. So I wouldn't worry too much um, about having a precise placement, but there we go. And then I'll put the lid on that. Cool. Now this next kit probably going to be the one that you want to see more of. Um, this is the, uh, the education add-on kit. It does not come in a nice box, unlike the EV3 and the, uh, uh, the NXT did with their add-on kit. So that's definitely a bit of a bummer. Um, but let's get into this guy um, and see what, you know, what to expect. There is a bomb on the side of this. Um, I might be inclined to cut that out of the box. I'm, I'm probably gonna put everything back in the box tonight, but um, long term, I might cut it out um, just to have it. So uh, it does have sort of the standard Lego uh, things on the side there. I'm gonna get my knife out and just slice them so that we don't go all over the place. Cool. So let's see what all we got in this kit. Cool, so that's everything there. Let's take a look. So there is a, another sort of declaration of something. So we do have that. I'm gonna set that aside. So we have a few different bags and a couple of loose pieces. So we'll start with the loose pieces. These are 32 module long um, axles. 32 module long axles are amazing. You can't put much torque on them or you'll candy cane them. You'll twist them out. But in terms of being able to uh, have a long mechanism or something to whack something or antenna on your robot, um, this is very, very handy. This last year in First Lego League, there was that swing. Uh, these could have been nice to have a poker to go in there and poke that swing from really, really far away and make it actually swing. Um, so they're great. They stay straight. They're very light. Um, so big fan of those. You get two more of the super duper large frames, um, as long as I keep them in frame. So you get two more, so that's a total of four of those. You get two more motor, or you get one more motor, which I think is the right move. Um, you know, this is probably gonna be faster and you know stronger than the smaller motors, although I haven't really had an issue with it. Um, but putting this on uh, you know, com a competitive Lego uh, robot for a first Lego league or something similar, um, I'd wanna probably run two of these. Uh, so that's nice. And then my favorite thing that they added was a second color sensor. Um, probably the most useful, in my opinion, uh, sensor in First Lego League. Um, two of these allows you to sort of follow the line really, really stably um, or to detect a line somewhere else on your robot. Uh, there's all sorts of different ways you can use it to trigger different programs, all sorts of stuff. Um, so this is a great little guy to have. I think it's the same cable length, but I could be wrong. It does kind of appear to be long, but um, who knows? That, that's quite the cable length, though, certainly. Um, let me actually get the other kit over here and uh, see if it is the right, if they are the same length or if it is longer. Because if it is longer, that's also very cool. But something tells me it's probably the same length. Yeah, they're both the same length. Yeah. But, you know. Like I said, the cable length uh, is not going to be an issue, um, I think, for most robots. Uh, for more competition-sized robots, you're probably not going to go build um, something ridiculous. But uh, this is probably about perfect. Um, 
for uh, you know what we're talking about here. So big fan. So cool. Set that stuff over here. Uh, it gives you another bag of pins. So um, you know, I, I said these pins are you know probably uh, they're probably gonna get lost, crushed, or whatever. Um, they do give you a couple of different couplers. I'm not gonna take them out of the bag just so I don't lose them. But you get the nice uh, axle coupler there. You get the red friction uh, pin with the axle coupler on the back or the bushing. You get some half bushings, little yellow guys in there. You get some single uh, sleeves on there, which are great to terminate. Um, hopefully you can see that. Uh, to terminate um, a loose pin or something sticking out if you want to make it look pretty. You also get another uh, circular plate with a hole in it. I, I think you get two of those in there. So Plus a couple of other um, you know, axle 90 degrees and stuff like that. So really handy bag there. Let's get into the big one here. So the big one comes with four more purple frames, which I think is a great thing. Uh, can't get enough of these. These are fantastic. Um, you get four of them, so that's cool. Set that over here. You get a whole bunch more 15 module long uh, beams, so those will go to good use, no doubt. And then probably the thing that everyone would buy the kit for, almost just for these alone, um, are these awesome uh, wheels. So this is like those smaller wheels, uh, like I showed you in the standard kit before. Um, but these large guys are pretty, pretty awesome um, for uh, robots. As you know, your kids will probably discover bigger wheels means they can go faster, gives them a bit more granular control, um, a lot of advantages. So I am really excited to see this in there. Um, so there's two of them, so you can make a nice drive. I know there's the robot on the uh you know on the cover of the box here you know and that sort of uh you know is a thing so um you know and everyone's sort of a big fan of that so uh i get it um and i i would say that that's probably a good robot design too for first lego league so let's continue going through this um let's start with this bag move these guys over here for a sec So we get some black fenders, which are kind of cool. Get some more red 2x4 with the axles down the middle, some longer beams, and we got some pieces that we're going to need to assemble. Set this around. By the way, the little ball here does have a little bit of heft to it. Um, so I don't know if there's a metal core or what, but you also get some gears in here. So pretty good selection of stuff. I'm going to set that aside. I'm going to go for this particular bag. These two bags go together. Um, you get two of these turntables. So turntables are a great way to transfer motion inside a robot, um, to make an arm, to make a you know, standard turntable, all sorts of stuff. Uh, great challenge to give your kids an idea of what to use with them. They don't have the inner um, teeth. These only have the outer teeth on them, which I think is fine. Um, you know, most people only use the, inner, or the outer teeth and you know, lock this in on the bottom and then drive the outside. So uh, I think that's pretty good. It's pretty low friction. Um, so this could be a way to transfer, you know, spinning wheels or special attachments on your robot. They're very strong. You have a lot of, you know, you pair this with a, a frame or something like that, you know, and this is a great way to have, you do something like that and sort of sandwich them, right? You have a great degree of freedom um, and your kids can, uh, can really play with that. So uh, I think that's a big win in the, uh, the add-on kit. You also get another caster. So this is a big win as well. Um, the first caster was great. The second one's even better in my opinion. You get some clear pieces uh, and some also some of these like zigzag pieces, um, which are fantastic. Some more pulleys um, in this bag. So uh, all sorts of stuff that I'm not gonna dump it out just because there's a lot of little pieces. I didn't realize how many little pieces are in this. Um, so here comes gravy part two, uh, in my opinion. You get some of the banana technic. So this sort of got its name because it was originally yellow in the one excavator set. And you get eight whole pieces in here. Um, this can be used as hooks, but since it has the teeth on the inside, you can actually connect them together and you can make a really, really big uh, turntable. Um, you can make these actually be wheels for your robot if you connect them all together. You could come up with a way to make them into wheels, all sorts of stuff. Um, they're a lot of fun. They're, I mean, just they're a completely different shape. 
they, they do go 90 degrees. They have an axle on either end. Um, you can put them together to make them double wide if you want to turn them into a wheel or something. Uh, they can also be good sk uh, skids on the bottom of your robot if you want to, you know, slide across something or go over. Um, you know, if, again, if you're a first person, you probably uh, remember, uh, what you call it, um, Stronghold, where they had to go over all the different obstacles with the big FRC robots, uh, first box competition robots. So this is, you know, something that would be kind of cool if you had to go over some rough terrain. They had the... Uh, in deep space, they had the lunar land uh, area that they had to drive the robot over, so that could be really, really helpful for that. You also have some long, I believe these are also, uh, these are 13, so they're keeping the same color code, so these are always 13, um, you know, aqua pieces. And then you get two more wheels. So again, loving these wheels, they're pretty fantastic. Um, so that gives you a total of four in this kit, which is, I, I think that's probably all you will ever need for a competitive Lego robot. So let's keep going because there's some other cool things in here. Um, there's some inside jokes as well. It wouldn't be sort of a first Lego League targeted kit without this little guy. So you might recognize him there. Uh, that is our little chicken. Um, so if you don't know the specialness of the chicken, um, you got some first Lego League to learn. Um, so I am pretty pumped that there's a chicken in this set. Uh, they also give you a small turntable or two. Um, some of the smaller rack and pinion. It's pretty nifty in there. A whole bunch more pins. These also have the, uh, the axles on them. Um, I see a wow in the chat. Yep, I'm pretty thrilled about the chicken too. Um, so, so. Ah, for the bananas. Oh, okay. Yeah, uh, Christy is following uh, the chat closer for me, so if you guys have any comments, feel free to jump in there. Um, but you also, besides getting a nice slew of, you know, various parts, you get some more of the T pieces I like so much. Um, they come in here. Uh, you get some with the axle holes. You get some of the axles with the ends on them. So I am a big fan of the uh, of these axles for wheels, um, and you put them through your motor. Um, if you're a cantilever, your motor, um, maybe not the best design, uh, you know, you could, you know, but it's quick and simple. And when you're working with kids who this is sort of their first time doing stuff, um, that's really handy. Uh, so, you know, these are great to have in the kit. I'm really, really digging that. Um, but yeah, otherwise just some more beams and great stuff in there. Um, one thing I should point out, um, in case you didn't notice, the center hub of these wheels does, just like the smaller ones, has four pinholes in addition to the axle. So you could actually mount this just using pins and not use the axle at all, um, which is a really, really sturdy way to sort of mount that and something I would be curious to see how long it takes your uh, students to discover. I'm um, looking at this bag, I went in to grab this one because when you get some really long axles again, this is I think a 16 module long axle, and you get some more of those uh, direction converters, but you also get some fun things in here. So you get some of these gears, which are particularly interesting um, because they uh, don't have any uh, axle cuts in them. They can just spin freely. That's really nifty. Um, then you also get for the uh, small turntables. So these are good for those smaller parts that you maybe don't need, uh, you know, uh, super strong, you know, hold on. Um, so you get a couple of those. You get some of these guys. I don't know a good name for them. Um, I've used them as wheels, I've used them as cams, all sorts of stuff. Um, you get a couple of those in there. Put together the second uh, turntable there. Um, you also get one of these. Uh, so this is a particularly useful piece. Um, it's interesting to see when kids see it, what they think. Uh, this can be a gearbox. Um, you can use bevel gears in it and you know do something that way. Uh, the small bevel gears work really well. Um, or you can... Uh, what you call it, use it to support an axle um, and hold like a roller out in front of your robot. It does have axle holes on the back, so you can mount it like that. Um, it also has the holes on the side, so it's a pretty flexible little piece. Um, it's been around for a while, but uh, I'm a fan. Uh, you do also get some more slopes. Uh, so this was a cool piece that was in um, sort of like the, uh, the sort of turquoise ones that we saw before. Um, we get some in here, so uh, yeah. And you get a few of these, I guess, um, in here, but uh, the the free spinning gear is great because if you're trying to make a long gear train, 
You can use this and connect it over multiple axles um, without having to worry about them spinning. You can also use this inside a gearbox if you want to switch between things. So uh, a lot of different uses there. Let's see if there's anything else in this particular one. Nope. And then this last one here is just more connectors and shrouds and covers. Um, so pretty standard one. Like I said, I'm not going to dump them all out because I got to put these all away uh, after we're done. Um, big fan of the chicken there. Uh, so that's sort of um, a tour through the education kit and all that. Um, you know, the uh, Spike Prime set as well as the uh, add-on. Um, you know, in looking at this, uh, you know, um, I'm pretty excited for it. Uh, the number one thing I'm hearing from coaches now is, well, my team's a competitive team. We wouldn't use that kit. Uh, and I'm not sure that is the right opinion to have. Um, I agree that the colors are maybe a little bit more accessible um, to younger students um, and certainly less masculine than the uh, blacks and the reds and the grays of the EV3. They're not nearly as Batman. You know, Will Arnett would be proud of me for the, uh, you know, he likes his black and very dark grays. Um, so I would say from that standpoint, uh, you know, while the colors maybe aren't as aggressive and masculine, um, the pieces that are in it, uh, both the, you know, the core set as well as the education uh, expansion set are fantastic. Uh, the new caster wheel is something instantly that I love and the wheels are objectively the best wheels I could see for competition um, on so many levels. Uh, they have great mounting holes. They have lots of them. Um, they have a good weight to them. They don't slip. They roll nicely. Um, yeah, the larger frames. And then uh, the other thing that everyone's asked is the brick, you know, you're giving up, um, you know, some technology on the brick here by not having the screen and all that. Uh, I would say this brick is exactly what you need for a competitive robot. Um, in my coaching of a team, generally we don't use the ultrasonic sensors because um, again, they don't really have much that's a regular shape. So I could see myself uh, having a team that, you know, would say no to that. Um, you know, I, I, I let the kids decide, but I usually have them do a whole bunch of experiments with all the sensors, you know, during the season and they usually come to that conclusion. Um, I could see them wanting a second light sensor. Um, most teams uh, that I've been involved with definitely run two light sensors um, or color sensors uh, for sensing lines and making a very, very smooth line follow. And then having four motors, you know, easily accessible, that's great. Um, the touch sensor, maybe if I need to back into something, but internal to the uh, Spike Prime itself um, is like a gyroscope and, excel and accelerometer. So you don't really need uh, to have sensor ports for those. Like that's already built in. And um, if you know how an accelerometer works, when something goes and bumps into it, it's gonna get a jitter um, and it's gonna be noticeable. Um, so, you know, from the parts, I, I would see, you know, it being quite competitive. Um, the size being smaller is also, I think, a big win. The simpler interface means you're gonna spend less time switching programs. Um, it, it, it really checks a lot of boxes um, in terms of being a competitive platform. And if you don't like the colors of the pieces, you can always add on different pieces. Um, but I personally am a big fan of adding the colors. It, it's nice to see something different um, and colorful um, out on the field. So uh, I would not stray away from this. Uh, I would actually even strongly consider if I was a EV3 team uh, jumping over to uh, Spike Prime. Um, I, I think it is that much of a you know sort of win, um, you know, for these teams. Uh, it, it adds a lot of uh, you know, ability to, you know, um, compete. Just the size factor, the compactness of it. You know, usually you see these monster robots and they're big because putting the brick and wheels and, you know, motors together just takes up a lot of space. And this does everything in a much more compact, much more succinct package. Um, so I'm a big fan of that. The connectors being modular, uh, you know, and being connected and all that are also fantastic. There's no little plastic nubs that are gonna break off on these. Um, one thing I haven't tried yet uh, is interfacing it with like the boost sensors and seeing if they work or the boost motors. I would assume the boost motors work. Um, I don't know about the boost sensors, um, but you know, that would be something too to think about. Uh, you know, programming wise, um, it's also potentially easier, potentially harder. I'll start this guy up um, really quick here and I'll flip over to my iPad. Um, here we go. this down and see if I can get this on the uh, overhead. Yeah, I'll do the picture in picture so you can see me too. 
So got Spike Prime starting up here. Start the app. Of course, the app doesn't want to start. Hmm. I guess the app doesn't want to start for me. Let's see if I can get that to go. See if I restart my iPad. The app was working literally right before we started this video about an hour ago. Um, and I'll try restarting the iPad here. Could just be that my iPad's old. So this iPad's like three or four years old. that app doesn't want to go for me tonight. So I guess I won't be able to show you programming tonight, um, but I can get into that in a later video. Um, but I thought I'd also pay attention here. I haven't seen much comments here in the, uh, in the chat. Um, are there any questions or anything that folks wanted to talk about? Uh, anything that anyone wants to ask or chat about here. Okay, let me see. I'm watching as well from uh, watching other forms of social media as well to see if uh, anyone's asking me questions there. I'm not seeing any uh, Facebook messages or anything like that. Um, so, so I think we're coming to the end. Oh, we got a question here uh, or a comment. I'd love to see some robot design building tips in the future. Yep. Um, so my thought is, is I have some free time right now. So uh, I was going to do this live, gather some feedback from you know what anyone would be like to see. I'll watch the comments as well, um, you know, and go from there. But, uh, you know, um, if, uh, you know, if you're interested in that, I can definitely make that happen. What are the boost motors and sensors? Um, my one boost kit is not, a like, not within arm's reach of here. Um, but boost is part of sort of the uh, code and play or build and code um, set that uh, LEGO has that's commercial facing. So there's a Star Wars one. Um, I actually have a brief video of that up on my YouTube, so you can probably find that, you know, not too far from here. Um, you know, so that's definitely uh, one option. Um, and uh, it comes with a motor and a couple of sensors. I don't know if that's easy to get. Uh, Christy, I don't know if you could run and grab that maybe. Uh, it should be on the table next to the bed in the spare bedroom. So let's see if we can get that really quickly. Uh, it's the R2. So, yeah, um, there were two main sets that had boost uh, sort of stuff. Um, one of them was just sort of a generic boost thing, and then the other one was a Star Wars themed one, um, which was kind of cool. Um, it had sort of like its own semi-programmable brain. Yeah, here we go. I just need him. So, yeah, so this is, uh, you know, boost here. Um, and basically the brain part of it is sitting up inside of him right now. Uh, he has a little uh, light sensor here on the side, and it plugs in with the same connector. So um, I don't remember how I uh, take this off. I don't remember what the 
I know there's a couple of pins that are holding it in somewhere, but I don't remember where they are or what they're doing. Um, but yeah, this would actually slide and actually has an integrated uh, motor on it. Um, so, you know, and this would start up and connect over Bluetooth to your phone. And then you have the ability to plug in using these same sort of boost uh, slash spike slash Technic Hub uh, motors. So there's actually a motor right here in the back. This should actually pop out relatively easily. There we go. It's so like this would be the boost motor and it plugs in with the same connection. Um, so, you know, that could be a thing, uh, you know, um, I'd be curious to see how that interfaces with, uh, with spike, um, just cause it's a different motor. It's got a lot more studs on it. Um, <coughs> so, uh, but yeah, that's a uh, boost for you. Um, you know, and then the, uh, the light sensor slash color sensor is this little guy here. Um, so. Yeah, it's just a different platform, um, you know, uh, more commercial in focus, more sort of, you know, theme friendly and all that. But, you know, they had, they did a uh, R2-D2 um, and a, uh, what you call it, uh, there's a gonk droid that also comes in it. You know, so, um, so yeah, that's Boost. Uh, so I'd be curious to see how they interface. Uh, teams might be interested in using them. So, you know, um, that's always a thing. Uh, but yeah, um, definitely building techniques though are gonna come up. Um, you know, I, I mentioned one of my favorite ones earlier um, is putting holes or putting pins in every hole possible. I'll probably do a video or two coming up in, you know, the next week or so here um, of just different building techniques, uh, you know, with spike prime parts for everyone. Um, so I definitely see that, Laura, and we'll make that happen. Um, any other questions here? We're sort of getting towards the end of the evening. I know it's getting late for some folks, uh, but this will be available as well. So if you want to, you know, uh, check out all the different pieces and, you know, parts that came in the kit, um, you know, and see, you know, the robot as well as, you know, the wheels and all that sort of fun stuff that came in the uh, Spike Prime set, um, you know, uh, you can totally... Uh, you know, watch this later. Oh, I got another question. Like power functions, but can you use them in FLL? Would you recommend EV3 or Spike Prime for a competitive team? Um, so yes, just like power functions. Um, and can you use them in FLL or not? I don't know yet. Um, that's a rules question and the game for next year hasn't been released. So uh, that is a great question. That'll be interesting to see in the rules. Historically, it has been any Lego piece is eligible. Um, you know, but they limit you to the types of motors and sensors. We'll see if that changes or is the same this next year. So I would say stay tuned to the rules. I don't know anything um, about the rules, so I'm not gonna <laughs> give you any help there, unfortunately. Um, the question though, would I recommend EV3 or Spike Prime for a competitive team? Uh, honestly, um, for what I've done with it and all that, I would say Spike Prime. Um, I prefer smaller robots. I think it's easier to program when your kids aren't getting caught up on things. They get less frustrated. Um, and I think, uh, you know, uh, it, it's just got the parts, right? You know, when you look here, you know, at everything on the table, and if I pull up, you know, the kit, like, just everything that's in here um, sort of, screams that it was built around competition. The fact that, you know, if you get the uh, expansion set, you have eight of these types of wheels, you know, with it. Um, that's pretty phenomenal. Not to mention all of the frames, you can make some ridiculous attachments. Uh, if you watch any of the first Lego League videos online and having judged a lot of first Lego League, I love watching them and seeing what teams come up with. You know, you see these giant like arms and things that come off and spring open and, you know, these frames are huge for those sorts of structures. Um, you know, and having a lot of really long Technic pieces, having regular motor shapes, like when you give a kid a EV3 and even an eighth grader and you say, hey, can you build, you know, me a robot with it? They first look at the motors and go, I have no idea how to use this. Everyone can look at this motor and say, oh, I can mount it sideways, I can mount it up and down, I can use it in lots of different directions. So because it's more regular, I think it's a, a more creative platform and something that I, I would recommend for the more competitive teams. Um, I will likely be involved with a team or two in the next year. 
um, you know, my uh, girlfriend's a third grade teacher, um, so I, I definitely want to get her, you know, students involved with uh, First Lego League or some students from her school at least. Um, start a team there, and they'll be using one of these Spike Prime kits because uh, I think it is that you know leaps and bounds better. You got programming on the iPad. Um, you got the app. It's scratch based. It ties into a lot of things that um, you know these kids are doing anyway. Uh, you know, in school, um, especially with like code.org and stuff. Um, so scratch is an alien to them. The only disadvantage is that it only has six ports instead of eight. But from how I would use the uh, kit and how I would try and coach my kids to use the kit, um, I don't think that would be a disadvantage. I would definitely spend some time, especially with an older, more competitive team, learning how to use the internal gyro and uh, you know accelerometer stuff um, to to make decisions. You know, like did I hit a wall or not? Um, yeah. Yeah, I would say my recommendation is pretty strong for Spike Prime for the competitive robots. So, uh, Finny, thanks for the question. Um, but yeah, otherwise, uh, I think we're going to bring this here to the end. I'll give everyone another you know minute or so to ask questions if you want to get one last one in. I know there's a delay in the video and all that, um, but uh, but yeah, we'll see if anyone else has anything to share um, or any questions they want to get in here. I really enjoyed this. I hopefully you guys have had fun um, digging through uh, all different pieces and parts. Um, I do want to open this while I wait. Uh, just confirm that they are more pulleys. Uh, yep. And you can tell the pulleys from just rubber bands because pulleys are actually nice and round. So are not pulleys, but uh, belts because they're actually nice and round um, and they slip, which is cool. So, yep, you get two more red ones in there. So, um, cool. Well, I appreciate everyone joining me. Uh, like I said, YouTube takes a little bit of time to process these videos, and then they become uh, resharable and all that. So, um, you know, this is uh, Teacher Appreciation Week as well. Um, so, shout out to all the teachers and coaches out there. Um, I know things are really, really hard right now, um, you know, with COVID 19 and all that, and hopefully everyone's staying healthy and safe. And I appreciate you coming out here, watching this video, um, you know, and sort of getting educated about next season. Uh, I know your students will appreciate it. And uh, as someone who coaches and uh, gets to work with a lot of teams, I appreciate uh, the investment you put in there for the kids. Um, so thank you everyone, stay healthy, stay safe. If you're watching this after COVID, hopefully that's sooner rather than later. Um, you, know, uh, you know, hopefully we're back to normal and we're in the middle of a, a you know, uh, thrilling first Lego league season, if not, Seems like virtual uh, events are going to be a thing too. So, anyway, thank you everyone uh, for watching and uh, have a good evening. I'll catch you later with some follow up video showing some building techniques and some programming for Spike Prime. So, stay tuned. <laughs>